What's going on guys? My name is Dr. Jim Cellini. I'm a board certified practicing veterinary neurologist and neurosurgeon. On today's episode, I want to react to a video that I found from a very popular veterinary YouTube channel called The Vet Ranch. The channel has almost 3 million subscribers and they produce a lot of really good videos showing dogs and cats that are down on their luck who maybe sometimes don't have owners or just dropped off, showed up at the door. And these veterinarians do everything in their power to try to help them as best they can. So it's a really heartwarming, really good channel. I think you should check it out. I recently saw an episode on their channel that resonated with me for two reasons. One, the dog that they're working with kind of looks like a mutt of kind of like what my dog is, my dog Bernie, who I've shown on the channel many times. The second reason was this dog has a problem, a neurological problem that is very commonly um, kind of under-recognized and not really talked about very much and not as well known as some of the more uh, more common problems like epilepsy and disc herniations and stuff like that. So I thought it provided a good opportunity to talk about this condition specifically. But before I do, please smash that like and subscribe button. If you like what you see here, maybe leave a comment below. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's get into the episode. My new shaky buddy here is Bonnie. Uh, Bonnie was picked up by her local animal control officer. She was found wandering the old bone yard here in town. Um, she was dumped. Somebody saw him dump two dogs. And um, I don't know exactly what's wrong with Bonnie, but I am a little bit worried there's something going on with her brain. So I'll show you. Okay, to start with, whatever type of dog or mix of dogs Bonnie is, this is my favorite type of dog. When people ask me, Dr. Cellini, what is your favorite breed? I don't have a favorite breed, but whatever mix of dogs make little dogs look like this, where they've got like some extra hair, like a wiry, kind of like a beard, and they're tiny, not too tiny, but they're small. Yeah, so like I'm already emotionally attached to whatever's gonna happen in this episode, but let's keep going. So what I'm seeing with Bonnie right off the bat, I'm seeing that she's weak and uncoordinated in all four of her limbs. I'll slow down the video a little bit, but you can see right here that Bonnie is having some trouble. She's incoordinated and she, and she kind of tips over and falls or staggers to one or both sides. And it's all four of her limbs. It's not just her back legs. It's not just her front legs. In addition to that, what I'm not seeing is Bonnie have an obvious head tilt, like she, her head is tilted to one side. And she seems to be pretty normal in terms of her mentation or her behavior. She's interactive with the doctor. She's, you know, bright and alert, as we call it. She's responsive. So right off the bat, given all this information, I'm highly suspicious that Bonnie either has a cervical spinal cord problem to impact all four of her legs, or she has a problem in the very back part of her brain called the brainstem or the cerebellum. So we're going to do some blood work. We are a little concerned she may have ingested some sort of intoxicant. Uh, so we're gonna do a drug test on her. Doing blood work and testing general metabolic function is pretty standard. They call it a minimum database for a reason. But usually when dogs are suffering from such severe metabolic disturbances or intoxications, those things don't usually cause them to be so off balance but then have a completely normal mentation. They're usually gonna be sick or like really lethargic acting. They're not gonna be bright and alert and uncoordinated to this degree because toxins generally don't selectively affect the nervous system. It's not 100%. But in general, when I see dogs who are systemically well and acting fine, so to speak, but their function is so disturbed, that usually implies more of a direct like spinal cord or brain problem rather than a systemic or metabolic problem, if that makes sense. We have some Bonnie P. We have a drug test. I don't know if I hope that this is going to be positive or not, but we're going to see. Minutes. You peel it. Oh yeah, it's definitely working. It's always fun when these come back positive and you get to tell the owner that their dog got into a drug when the owners insisted that there was no possible way their dog could have gotten into a drug. So we waited a lot of time. I guess I was kind of hoping we'd be positive for one of these drugs. Looks like she's negative for drugs. Um, it'd be easy to treat for those. But you can see here, two lines on all the drugs means no intoxicants. We didn't find anything that we could hang our hat on. I treat her for what it could be. Um, dilute out what I hope is a toxin with the fluids, uh, treat the little infection that she may have, kill the fleas, and see how she does. This is another way of saying treat the treatable. This is a phrase that we use 
to tell owners that we're going to treat for various conditions that are treatable when we don't know exactly what the dog has. We had her on food for a few days and she got better. So we thought we were in the clear and then I came back from the weekend and Bonnie's a little bit worse as you can see. So we went ahead and took an x-ray. I'm going to show you Bonnie's x-ray um, and I'll be honest, it looked just weird to me. I couldn't exactly figure out what was going on so I sent it to a radiologist. So. They helped me. But these are the two cervical vertebrae here. If you can see, this is pointed almost up. This really should be more in line with the spine. And so that looseness uh, is allowing her head to kind of leverage her spine and cause the, the neurologic deficits that we're seeing. So it looks like little Bonnie here has instability between the C1 and C2 cervical vertebrae, resulting in them kind of wiggling around and the C2 vertebrae kind of tipping up and pushing or compressing her spinal cord. The term for this condition is what's called an atlantoaxial subluxation or an AA lux for short. And that basically just means that C1 and C2 are not lined up and tight. They don't move together, they move separately. Now the spinal cord is housed within these two vertebrae like it is the rest of the vertebrae throughout the spinal column. And you can imagine when the two vertebrae surrounding the spinal cord are moving around, spinal cord doesn't like that very much. And when dogs have this condition, they can have relatively mild deficits like what Bonnie has, or in some cases they can have very severe acute total paralysis of all four of their limbs if those bones move too suddenly and too severely. Fun fact, this is how Dale Earnhardt, the race car driver, died. Look it up. And as you can see in the illustration here, instead of the spinal cord taking a nice straight line into the back of the skull, it kind of has to take a really sharp angle to get into the skull. And that angle is because the vertebrae, C2, is lifting up and pushing on it. Here's a really nice MRI example showing you much more detail so that you can see what I'm talking about. The spinal cord is getting compressed, pinched more or less by that intrusive C2 vertebrae lifting up and compressing it. Of particular note, these dogs are very sensitive to downward flexion of the head because when you downward flex or ventral flex the head and neck, C2 will pop up as a result of that and that kind of goes up and up and up into the spinal cord. So with these dogs, you never want to downward flex their heads if you at all suspect this condition. Unfortunately, that's something she was probably born with. So yeah, we usually see this in much smaller dogs like Bonnie or even smaller than Bonnie. And the reason that is, is because there's a bunch of ligaments and bony, kind of fine bone structures that are supposed to form and keep C1 and C2 in place and make it a congruent unit. But in very small dogs, these are just not there. They're totally missing or they're kind of underdeveloped and that contributes or puts them at risk for instability. We are going to try some more steroids to decrease the inflammation and a neck brace. And it's possible that Bonnie will need surgery someday, but we're hoping that with uh, the neck brace and steroids and stuff, we can kind of control the laxity in her spine and uh, hopefully her body will kind of scar, scar that looseness down over time and we'll avoid. So as he alluded to there, there's two options to treat this condition. One is to place a split bandage over the head and neck to immobilize the head and neck and keep the dog from moving too much and to hopefully allow the body to form scar tissue, heal this and stabilize it on its own. The other treatment option is surgery where you go in and use some combination of screws, pins, bone cement, stuff like that to stabilize the C1, C2 construct, uh, hopefully permanently. There's pros and cons to each approach. Surgery is in general the gold standard for something like this because it's more of a permanent fix and it reduces the risk of a relapse. But surgery is also extremely costly. Depending on your market, it can cost anywhere between five to $8,000, maybe even more. Now the advantage of a bandage is that it's obviously much cheaper than surgery. There's very little cost that goes in the bandage material. But there are downsides to the bandage as well. For one, the amount of bandage material that you have to place around their head and neck can sometimes be a lot relative to their small body weight. And so it keeps them from being able to stand up and move around. And sometimes it can actually uh, keep them from breathing normally because they can't expand their chest wall. The other downside to a bandage is that you have to be very fastidious with it. You have to keep it clean and dry at all times. It can never be wet or dirty. And you have to change it about once a week. So there's a lot of trips back to the vet. Now to help solve some of these issues with neck braces and dogs, I asked around to some of my colleagues and some of them recommended to me these little braces are called Balto braces made by KVP Orthopedics. I find these to be a really nice solution to the problem of placing a head and neck bandage in general. As you can see, it's a much lower profile uh, brace for their necks. It's really easy to put on, it's easy to keep clean, and it accomplishes the same thing for an AA Lux, which is prevention of the downward ventroflexion. As you can see here, I tried this on my dog Bernie, and uh, I don't know how much he necessarily enjoyed being a test subject, 
But as you can see, uh, I'm able to kind of gently put pressure downward on his muzzle. And you can see it's kind of keeping that from happening. His entire spine is moving down altogether rather than just his head as a pivot point. And that's really what you want to try to accomplish when you're bracing these dogs. I also went ahead and fed Bernie with the brace on and he seemed to be able to eat no problem whatsoever. So I didn't have to hand feed him or anything like that. It's made out of a really sturdy material, as you can see there. Um, this is also way easier to clean and way more resistant to getting wet and dirty. That's a huge problem with traditional bandages that we place. They tend to actually soak up moisture and rather than being able to clean them, we have to just change them. So something like this would be way easier to clean and replace and take on and off. So I think this is a huge upgrade potentially over a traditional bandage. KVP was actually nice enough to give me a couple of these and I'm going to use these in my practice going forward. I'm actually looking forward to it. But as you can see, Bonnie's doing pretty well. She seems to enjoy her neck brace and her new lease on life. I do notice that she is playing in the dirt and getting that neck brace dirty, which is one of the things I kind of mentioned earlier. You don't want to get that thing dirty because you have to change it every time that happens. So, um, yeah, it looks like Bonnie's doing pretty well. I wanted to use this episode to bring up the condition of an AA Lux and talk about it a little bit. Thought it was a really good episode. I love the Vet Ranch channel in general. So I hope you enjoyed this episode, guys. Please, if you don't mind hitting that like and subscribe button, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think.